Finishing your woodworking projects can be very intimidating. There is a lot of information in the world and a lot of it is inaccurate. The best way to ruin 80 hours of work is to put the wrong finish on it and you just don't want to do that. So today I'm going to cut this piece of wood into three pieces and make three samples out of it. I'm going to show you how I do my surface prep and I'm going to show you the three finishes I use the most and why I use them in specific situations. Before we get started I wanted to say that the finishes I'm going to be showing in this video are the finishes that I use in my business. None of this is sponsored in any way. The first finish we're gonna go over is shellac. I use shellac on light traffic pieces or decorative pieces like boxes and stuff like that. Shellac gives you the most beautiful finish and it feels incredible. You can buy shellac at the Home Builder store or you can order it online, but I like to make my own so we're gonna do that today. And it's a really easy formula, so let's talk about what it's made of. First, you're gonna need to get some shellac flakes, believe it or not and that's made from lac bug secretion, which is super gross, but it is a very nice finish. I promise you it's worth touching the gross secretions. I get de-waxed shellac flakes because it can mess up subsequent finishes that you put on after the shellac. So I like to use this as a sanding sealer a lot. It makes the wood really pop. So for example, I could use the shellac to fill in a lot of the wood pores and wood grain, and then I come over the top of it with a more heavy duty finish, and the shellac makes the wood really pop but if you have a waxy shellac, the finish won't adhere. The other part of the shellac formula is denatured alcohol. So you just need flakes and denatured alcohol. And I like to make mine at a one pound cut. And all that means is you do one ounce of flakes for every eight ounces of denatured alcohol. So I'm just gonna put one ounce of flakes in here. That's good, we're at our one ounce mark. I like to use a little mason jar because they have the one cup measurement on the side there. And I'm just gonna take my denatured alcohol, fill up to that line. It doesn't have to be incredibly accurate, just pretty accurate. And then I'm gonna dump my shellac flakes in. This is not the best vessel for this. <laughs> and then you just seal it up tight. And then give it a little shake, mix it all up in there and just check on it every 30 minutes or so. Give it a little shake and make sure it's breaking down. The denatured alcohol will start to break down the shellac flakes and this will all become one really nice consistent liquid. There are a lot of ways to apply shellac, but the way I like to do it the most is the way my friend Russell Kieselbach taught me and that's to hand plane the surface and then sand it with 400 grit and then 600 grit and then start applying your finish. I like to use a white rag to apply and this is a trick I actually learned from Fine Woodworking Magazine and I'm pretty sure it was Mike Pekovich, but I like to ball the rag up, put it in another rag and then just kind of encase it in there. And what ends up happening is that ball becomes the reservoir for your finish because all we're gonna be doing is wiping it on the surface. It's so pretty. After I'm done wiping on the first layer, I like to take it and put it in another small mason jar. Because this is denatured alcohol, it will evaporate and dry out, but if you keep it in a little container, it won't dry out on you, and you can just keep reusing that same rag over and over. And the thing with shellac is, you really wanna put up a lot of layers onto it. You kind of build up the coats on this thing. For this, I'm gonna put six coats on here, and I'm gonna be able to do that every five minutes or so. After I get the six coats of shellac on, I'm gonna put a furniture wax on there. I prefer this furniture wax, it's my favorite, but you can use any furniture wax, and once you get it on there, it's gonna feel incredible. In between coats, I like to knock down the surface a little bit with white Scotch-Brite. This is equivalent to a thousand grit. If you look at the piece, you can kind of see there's some unevenness, there's some streaking, and some higher gloss in places. So this will just knock it down and make it a lot more even. And then I'll start applying my subsequent coats after this is done. Sixth coat is on and I'm gonna knock it back again with the white Scotch-Brite pad just to even out the sheen and make everything look really nice. Very realistically, you could be done at this point and you'd have a beautiful looking piece of wood. But I'm going to apply this furniture wax. This isn't necessary, but what this will do is take it to the next level. It'll feel incredible and it gives it some added durability. The furniture wax is on, now I'm just gonna let it sit for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna buff off the excess. This is stunning and it feels incredible. I wish you could feel this because it's the best feeling finish 
and really the best looking finish of all the three I'm gonna show you. And I wish that shellac was more durable because I'd use it on everything. But the bottom line is it's not very durable. It's just very pretty and it feels incredible. So it's really only good for the light duty pieces and decorative stuff. The next finish we're gonna look at is hard wax oils. And there's a lot of hard wax oils on the market, but the one we use the most here is by Rustic Lumber. This has been a very good product for us because one, the price point is really good and it's just as durable or more than other products we have used. So let's talk about the pros of hard wax oils. One is the surface prep is very easy because typically you don't wanna sand above 120 for some or 180 for others. You can go higher and people do get success with that but the manufacturers claim that if you go too high, you'll close the cells on the wood and the oils won't go into the wood and the wax won't bond onto the fibers. There's two categories of hard wax oils. One's with a hardener and one without a hardener. You can use this product and it does have a hardener. You can use it without the hardener, but it will take 30 days to cure. And that's standard for hard wax oils. But if you use the hardener, it'll cut that down to a week, typically. In hard wax oils without a hardener, you're gonna apply your finish and you really need to let it sit overnight. But with the hardener, you're gonna be wiping that off in about 15 minutes. And that means you can move the piece around, which is really nice in a production environment. The finishing scenario that we use these in the most is for residential pieces. I feel that for most residential pieces, this is a very great option because everything in the house is typically gonna be light to medium traffic. Even the dining table, which is probably gonna see the most abuse, it only gets used maybe one or two times a day and sometimes maybe only a couple times a week. One way to look at it is that this provides a reasonable durability to your pieces. But what's really nice about it is that it's very easy to maintain. You can easily come back, sand the piece back, and then reapply finish and have it done in about a day. You will need to wait that week for it to fully cure, but that's a very easy process. And all in, you could be maybe an hour or two to refinish an entire table. One great thing about hard wax oils is that you can get them in different tints, which is nice because everyone has different opinions on how things should look. And when you're making things for clients, they have a bunch of different opinions about how they want their pieces to look and being able to have the finish have a different tint to it is a really nice thing to have. One of the shortcomings of hard wax oil, like I said earlier, is that without a hardener, it has a 30 day cure time, which is almost unreasonably long. You can't operate a business or make furniture and expect anyone to not use the piece they just got done for 30 days. It just is so long, you can't do it. The other problem I have with hard wax oils is that the manufacturers recommend very low sanding ceilings, which you can only go to like 120 on some. I take them to 150 or 180. Other people have varying success with higher grits, but they really recommend you keep it under 180 grit, which I think doesn't feel great. One of the reasons I love shellac is because it feels incredible and there's no ceiling on that. You can take it as high as you want and make the wood feel incredible. You just can't do that with a hard wax oil. Now that we've talked to death about hard wax oil, let's sand this piece of wood and get some finish on it. Like I said, the hard wax oil is a two part. In this case, it's a one to five. So you do five parts to one part of this. Some are one to three, and then there's other mixtures as well. But this is a one to five. I like to use these cheap syringes I get on the internet. I'll put a link down below for those. But it allows me to make smaller batches, which is really nice because this stuff's only got a six hour pot life. Once you mix it up, you have to throw it away after six hours or use it. Use it or lose it. So I'm gonna get some of this opened up and get some of this into this little, little red Solo cup and show you how this works. With my two parts in the cup, I like to stir it for about 30 seconds and then I start applying. To apply, I like to use these white Scotch-Brite pads. They sort of abrade the surface while you're applying the finish and knock down any fibers that are standing up. And if I'm doing a large piece or a big horizontal surface, I like to use these pads here. This is a handle that you can attach the pad to and it just really eliminates fatigue and makes application really easy and fast on big surfaces. I like to coat the white Scotch-Brite in the finish so there's a lot on there. I don't like to put finish on the piece. I like to apply it from the applicator and then I like to do it in a little circular motion. You get the whole thing covered and cover everything. 
you're really wanting to push the finish into the wood fibers and make sure you cover the entire surface so it's evenly coated. One thing to keep in mind with the hard wax oils is that a little goes a really long way. You just wanna get enough to coat the surface. You don't want any buildup there because what'll happen is it'll get really gummy when you're trying to wipe off the excess, which is the next step. Now that this is coated, this didn't take much because it's so small, we're gonna wait 12 to 15 minutes and then come back with a white rag and wipe off all the excess. It's as simple as that. And according to the manufacturer, you only really need one coat of finish on here. I don't really subscribe to that. There's a lot of pieces where I will just do one coat and you can see that this has a very flat or matte sheen to it, which is desirable in some cases, but I think a lot of times it's a little too flat. So what I like to do is to add another coat. And that not only makes the sheen a little higher, but it also gives it some more durability. After I get the second coat on and I buff off all the excess 15 minutes later, I like to take my polisher machine and I put one of these microfiber bonnets on it and I go over the whole surface slowly. The heat activates the wax and causes the curing process to start even faster. Let's talk about the most durable finish of the three finishes we're talking about today. And the one that we use is this product by Gemini Coatings. It's a conversion varnish, specifically a 2K conversion varnish. And all the 2K means is that it's two parts. It's got the conversion varnish and a hardener, much like the hard wax oil. The difference is this is a film finish and it is bomb proof. We use this for conference tables and restaurant tables and pieces that are just gonna see a ton of traffic and a lot of abuse. It's really durable and it can stand up to the challenge. So let's talk about the downsides and that's literally everything else about this. This is a film finish and that builds a film layer on top of the wood. It binds to the wood but it builds up over the wood and that's what seals it. And you're building that layer up with plastic. And if you build up too many layers of that, it looks really bad and really fake, and you can tell that there is a film finish on it. The other thing is that this stuff is nasty, <laughs> really nasty. Once you start adding the hardener into it, you're dealing with really caustic and bad chemicals that can really harm your body with long-term exposure. In my shop, we use an HVLP to apply our film finishes. You can use an HVLP or an air compressor system, but the bottom line is to use these more professional or industrial finishes, you're going to have to invest in some sort of spraying equipment and it's not gonna be cheap. So let's talk about application. And it sounds intimidating, but once you just do it a couple times, it's just natural. You're gonna sand your wood to 180 grit, so go 80, 120, 180, and then you're gonna lay down your first coat. Once that flashes off or dries, you're gonna sand that back, almost back to the wood with 320 grit. And then you can do your second coat, and if you need to, a third coat. But I always sand at 320 between those coats. There are a ton of finishes on the market, and it's impossible to make a video to cover even a small portion of them. So I wanted to show you the three that we use the most, and that is to drive home the point that there is no one single finish to do everything you need. And if someone tells you that they have a finish that does that, they're a liar. They're lying to you because it's just not the case. These are the three we use the most, but we use 20 others on the regular as well. So I encourage you to get out there and try finishes and see what works for you and your shop.